Hello guys, welcome back. So in the previous tutorial, we uploaded files under the Amazon S3. Two files we uploaded. One was the uh, guest information and the other one is the reservation information. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to connect our Amazon S3 and Salesforce. So what I'll do is I'll go to the setup here and uh, we will look for other connectors. Okay, and uh, we are going to provide the secret key and access key, etc. So here I'm going to look for other connectors under the data cloud. So we'll select this and uh, we'll click on new here and it is asking the source. So we retrieve a file from Amazon simple storage service. So we're going to select Amazon S3, hit next here, connection name. I'll call it as Amazon S3 connection name. Now you have to provide the access key and the secret. So if you remember, we have a file which we downloaded and that file, it contains the access key and the secret. Okay. So same way, we're going to go ahead and go over here and copy this access key and we'll provide it over here. And similarly, we will go ahead and copy the secret and we will make sure it is correct. So we'll go ahead and, uh, okay. So this is the full key and we are going to provide this one over here, bucket name. Now, if you remember, what was the bucket name? So the bucket name is, this is the uh, bucket name, my data cloud bucket two. So that is the bucket name here and we'll provide the bucket name. Make sure there's no space. Parent directory, so what is the directory underneath? Uh, this is the name of the directory. So we'll go ahead and provide that and then test the connection. Okay, make sure you test it. Connection was established, so everything is correct. So we have provided the access key and the secret, okay? And then we provided the name of the bucket where your uh, files are and what is the parent directory, okay? So this is the parent directory. You can choose this and hit save and hit save here. Okay. So the connection has been successfully established. Now what we're going to do here next is we are going to bring the data from the Amazon S3 inside of our data cloud. So for that, what we're going to do is we'll go to the data cloud here. and we will create a new data stream. So we'll go, so we'll create one stream to get the guest information and another stream to get the reservation information. So here we are going to go ahead and click on new and uh, Amazon S3, the other, now you will see Amazon S3 here and click on next. Uh, this is the connection name. Now it is asking the file type. It is a CSV file. And what is the, uh, what is import from the directory? You have to provide the directory name here and then the file name. Okay, so what is the file name? This is the file name, Coral Clouds Guest CSV. Uh, and then what is the directory name? So the directory name is this one. So we're going to go ahead and provide the directory name here. And then hit next. Given file is not present in the location. Okay, let's remove the directory name. Okay, so now it is able to see it. We don't have to provide the directory name because in the Amazon S3, when we were building that connection, we already gave the directory. So we don't have to do it again. Now here, I'm going to call this the, the data lake object. I'm going to call it as guest. And this is the API name. These are, if you see here, the category is three types of categories are there, profile, engagement, other. So what type of data guest is it is a profile data right it is an individual information so we're going to go ahead and select profile what is the primary key so the primary key in this is the guest id and that is it that's all we need to select is the data lake object and if you want to change any of the field type you can do that so here let's say we change the email uh, to email and then phone number here we will select phone Guest ID is text, surname is text, first name is text, birth date if you want to see if there is anything else, uh, nothing. So we'll leave it as text and hit next here. Now again, data space has been selected. So data space is very, very important. Everything belongs to a particular data space. Okay, so the data space is default. Now refresh mode, do you want to do an absurd or do you want to do full refresh? What does absurd do? It will insert new and update the existing data 
or here full refresh it is going to delete the existing data and insert new data with every refresh so we can select the full refresh here and uh, file type frequency is null and we're going to go ahead and uh, set it to deploy you can actually set up the frequency from five minutes 30 minutes all of that if you want to keep refreshing the data we'll set the frequency to none here because we are not changing anything on amazon s3 those files are kind of fixed okay so we're going to go ahead and hit the deploy here now it's going to take some time and uh, we'll click the deploy and you can see here the fields mapped if you see is zero zero so it automatically could not figure out to which dmo i need to map okay so we will go ahead and map this in the next tutorial but you have gotten an idea that we bought the guest information from which source from the amazon s3 okay similarly we have to bring the reservations also so we'll create a new data stream to bring the reservations that is it for this tutorial. I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.